Uh, Elon Musk warns that Starlink system could be targeted in Ukraine, advises users to camouflage the antenna, place the device far away from people. Make no mistake, if Russia pursues its plans, it will be responsible for a catastrophic and needless war of choice. The United States and our allies and partners will support the Ukrainian people. Tech tycoon Elon Musk has indicated he will protect the internet in Ukraine and the world from the International Space Station if it crashes to Earth. Ukraine's Deputy Prime Minister Mikhailo Fedorov acknowledged the receipt of what appears to be a shipment of Starlink's terminals in a tweet. Elon Musk replied, you're most welcome. The terminals are ground-based satellite receivers and transmitters that people in Ukraine need in order to access Starlink, Musk's satellite internet system. Musk's president, Joe Biden, spent the first 15 minutes of his recent State of the Union address talking about Russia's invasion of Ukraine, an event that certainly has transfixed the world more than the latest twists and stumbles of his domestic legislative agenda. The United States has already sent Ukraine military, economic, and humanitarian aid. On that particular night, Biden wanted to send a message that America cared about Ukraine's fate and stood by the embattled nation, a thought he certainly shares with Musk. After Russia's invasion, many feared Ukraine's internet access would be cut off, either through cyber attacks or the destruction of internet infrastructure, or both. While there have been some temporary outages and attacks on government websites for the most part, there hasn't been an internet blackout yet. Even so, after Ukraine's vice prime minister, Mikhailo Fedorov, tweeted an appeal to Elon Musk, the billionaire sent help. Earlier this month, a truckload of Starlink satellite dishes, also known as dishies, showed up in Ukraine. Elon Musk also turned on Starlink's space internet service in the country, ushering in a round of positive headlines about his world-saving generosity. It's not clear if or when Ukraine will need alternate internet service, but it can't hurt to have the public support of the richest man in the world. Musk isn't the only powerful and influential tech magnate that Fedorov, who is also Ukraine's Minister of Digital Transformation, has appealed to for help during the invasion. Over the last several days, he has tweeted sometimes emotional pleas to Apple and Tim Cook to block App Store access in Russia, to Google and its CEO Sundar Pichai, and YouTube and its CEO Susan Wachitsky to deplatform Russian state media, to Cloudflare and its CEO Matthew Prince to block Russia's access to its services, and to Meta and Mark Zuckerberg to block access to Facebook and Instagram in Russia. Fedorov has also tweeted at payment processes and crypto exchanges to cut off Russia and called for cyber specialists to join an IT army. All these major corporations are based in America, and Musk believes that with Biden's words and reaching out to the decision makers, those named companies can join in saving Ukraine from the sore jaws of Russia. It's part of a seemingly effective strategy. Russia is known for using the internet to push its propaganda through coordinated social media campaigns, but Ukraine has come up with its own social media tactics, with its leaders making Ukraine's case through personal, often heartfelt appeals on various channels. As Fedorov said in a tweet recently, win the hearts of the world while cutting Russians off from technology that's become essential to many aspects of their daily lives. In the wake of all this, Biden's message to Vladimir Putin was simple. The Russian president had badly miscalculated. The economic pain that the US and Europe had imposed on Russia for its invasion was just beginning. The ruble was crashing. The Russian stock market was in free fall. Russian oligarchs would have their ill-begotten gains confiscated, and Russia was losing access to key technologies. There was another message to Russia beyond one of economic pain. Biden also emphasized that the US and its allies would fight to defend every inch of the territory of NATO countries. President Putin has put his nuclear forces on elevated alert and warned of devastating consequences if any nation intervened in Ukraine. Biden's message was to spell out, lest there be any doubt, when and where America itself would fight. It's not clear whether Biden convinced top American companies to snub Russia, but it seems Ukraine's request was heeded. Fedorov hasn't gotten everything he asked for from the other companies, but they have offered some help. Apple stopped selling products in Russia, cut off Apple Pay in the country, and removed Russian state-controlled news apps from its app store outside Russia. YouTube is deplatforming Russian state-controlled media in Europe, while Google and YouTube have stopped monetizing ads on Russian state-controlled websites and channels. Meta is restricting access to Russian state-controlled media on Facebook and Instagram in the European Union and demoting posts with links to Russian state-owned media globally. With Musk, however, Fedorov got exactly what he asked for from a CEO who loves attention and has a habit of jumping into well-publicized problems with his own novel Musk company-branded technological solutions. Musk has demonstrated a willingness to get involved in the Russian-Ukraine conflict in other ways too. He tweeted SpaceX's logo at a Russian official who threatened that the International Space Station would fall out of the sky if Russia were cut off from it.
While Musk usually collects accolades for his proposals, it's worth pointing out that these efforts don't always pan out in practice. In 2018, a random Twitter user asked him to save a group of teens trapped in a flooded cave in Thailand. Musk assembled a team of engineers to build an escape pod out of SpaceX rocket parts. It ultimately wasn't used in the rescue, and unfortunately, the laudable effort ended with Musk tweeting that one of the divers who saved the children was a pedo guy. Then, in March 2020, as the coronavirus pandemic hit the United States and hospitals ran low on ventilators, Musk tweeted that Tesla would make ventilators in its Buffalo, New York plant. It did not do this. Tesla built a ventilator prototype out of Tesla parts, which was never put into production, but the whole affair made for a nice publicity video. Musk's promise to donate hundreds of ventilators to hospitals ended up being Tesla-branded BPAP and CPAP machines, which are commonly used to treat sleep apnea. Tesla didn't actually make the machines, but someone did slap Tesla stickers on the boxes. While at least some of these machines were helpful, they're not ventilators. Musk's efforts have been more successful on other occasions. He tweeted in 2018 that he would fix Flint homes that had lead-contaminated water. Although that doesn't appear to have happened, the Elon Musk Foundation did donate lead-filtering water fountains to several Flint schools recently. Musk also tweeted earlier this year that he wanted to send Starlink terminals to Tonga after a volcanic eruption severed the cables that provide the island's internet. Starlink did, in fact, provide the island with 50 dishes and free service until its access is restored. The gift helped the people of Tonga and showed Starlink at its best, in remote locations that don't have access to wired services or cellular networks. As for Starlink in Ukraine, it does appear to be up and running, as Musk promised. A man named Oleg Kutkov, who lives in Kiev, tweeted that his dishy was working. Kutkov said that he didn't get the dish through Musk's donation. He happened to buy it months ago through eBay. He couldn't connect it to the internet then, nor did he expect to be able to do so. Kutkov is an engineer and said he got the dish to see how it worked, not actually make it work. Then Russia invaded his country. Musk's SpaceX has thousands of Starlink satellites in orbit, which allow the company to beam broadband services around Earth without the need for fiber optic cables. The satellites could keep Ukraine online if Russia's attacks damage its internet infrastructure. Meanwhile, the US and its European allies have been in remarkable lockstep as they imposed sanctions on Russia and offered military aid to Ukraine. Time and time again, during his speech, Biden celebrated this fact. He thought the West and NATO wouldn't respond, the American president said. Putin was wrong. We were ready. The likes of Musk, Biden, Zuckerberg, and even Pichai will definitely help Ukraine win this war, though the better option still remains amicable peace talks. Whatever the case, Musk has yet proven to the entire world that he is the modern-day Tony Stark. Talking of that, do you know that Musk is planning on opening a college? Click this link to find out more about that. We will be bringing you more of Musk's collaboration with Ukraine in our upcoming videos, so subscribe to ensure you don't miss out on any of those.